Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here today, hoping that Cartoon Network does not copyright this video. But nonetheless, I am bringing a series back onto the channel. Um, if you were around during the younger years of Treeb Talks, which seems like not a lot of you were, which is okay, um, we're reintroducing a new series called Deer. Um, what Deer is, is basically we talk to a guy that's either already off the team already you know gonna be released guys that you know we let go you know guys that are having a rough time so basically i've made three of these videos before i made one for justin blackman way back in the day i really wanted him to be good he ended up not panning out made a deer video for him made one for josh scoby uh the year he retired and i also made one for uh paul puzlesny so today you're probably wondering who's this deer video gonna be about but who else would it be about than the man himself, Blake Bortles. And ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a ride, a roller coaster of emotions from Treeb and me, basically spilling my heart out to Blake Bortles and thanking him for what he has done for the organization, and also bashing him a little bit for what he has done for the organization. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, with him making his final start probably as a Jacksonville Jaguar, I introduce you to dear Blake Bortles. Now you're going to have to forgive me in advance if I get a little emotional. I'm just kidding. I probably won't get a little bit emotional. I'll try my best at least. But let's flip the clock back all the way to 2014. The Jacksonville Jaguars were on the clock at pick number three. And this was a pretty good draft class to say the least. You know, when the Jags were at number three, I did not think quarterback was the selection here. I thought that we were going to go Khalil Mack and get Derek Carr. I actually seen a... <clears throat> comment that I made on Facebook back in 2014 that popped up uh, in my memories recently that I said everything's going to be okay when we select Khalil Mack and Derek Carr in the second round and you know it's like the Raiders ended up doing that and the Raiders are where they're at now you know traded Khalil Mack and Derek Carr hasn't panned out very well not to say that uh, Bortles has but nonetheless the draft was going on and I was going about to go to my 10th grade football meeting which was uh that's crazy now to think about that. It's been that long since Bortles. Bortles has been the quarterback of the Jaguars my whole high school career. So, <clears throat> when I was about to leave, the Jags were on the clock. And I was like, hey, we can't leave yet. You know, I got to see who the Jags pick. And then I was expecting to hear Khalil Mack or even Amari Cooper at the time. I was like, Khalil. And then they said Blake Bortles. And I was like, ooh, what? Like, I, <laughs> Blake Bortles was the last quarterback I thought the Jags were going to select. Uh during the draft process in 2014 but he ended up being the guy and he came into Jacksonville Chad Henney got the start um over Bortles and I just remember Henney got off to a hot start uh I believe we played the, that year we played the Eagles in week one and it was like 28 28 at halftime Henney was just lightened up and then we ended up losing I think like 42 28 <laughs> like the second half we ended up just getting blown out but uh, it didn't take long for the fans to start chanting Bortles' name and hoping that uh, he'd come in and we'll see what the future of the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, was actually all about. You know, they were chanting, they're Bortles, Bortles. And then finally, I believe it was week three or four of the regular season, Blake Bortles came in. And Blake Bortles did not have a great 2014. Um, he was thrown into a dumpster fire. This Jaguar team in 2014 was absolutely hot garbage. He was thrown into the fire. Didn't really have much of options really at all uh, across the field. But, you know, you'd see guys emerge in latter seasons like Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns. Um, and Marquise Lee as well, who uh, I guess this year has really proved vital to this Jaguar offense. Um, to compliment Blake Bortles, and that was shown in 2015 when the Jaguars were the kings of something called garbage time. And Blake Bortles was the garbage time quarterback king. He was tied for the NFL lead in touchdowns with 35, and he threw over 4,000 yards. And he still threw a lot of turnovers, and he still didn't win a lot of games. But that sample size, for me at least, was enough for me to literally commit and literally just go all in on this guy. Go all in on Blake Bortles, because I'm like, this is my quarterback. This is the future. He's going to get it done. 
Uh, let's see what we can do in 2016 because, you know, he just put up all these amazing stats. We have Marquise Lee. We have Allen Robinson. <laughs> we have Julius Thomas. You know, we're Mercedes Lewis. You know, I, I thought 2016 was going to be the year the Jaguars really take that next step. But what 2016 ended up being was probably one of the biggest disappointments uh, ever. Uh, Blake Bortles regressed. Um, every, basically, everybody regressed. Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns as well, both uh, regressed as well. And, you know, heading into the 2017 season, the Jags made a big splash in the offseason, signing guys like Calais Campbell, A.J. Boye, Barry Church, you know, those guys. To really try and help the defense and really try and help uh, this team win football games. And, you know, it seemed like maybe this was the year, you know. The Jags finally got together. Maybe Blake Bortles could have a good season. Um, and maybe, maybe make the playoffs? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what he can do. In 2017, Blake Bortles took them to the playoffs. Now, Bortles had some fantastic games in the 2017 season. He had a couple of three touchdown games, a couple of games that stand out to me especially. Uh, the Week 17 game against the Houston Texans, um, <clears throat> as well as the um, Week, I want to say 14 I want to say, like, week 14 against the uh, Baltimore Ravens. I mean, not the Baltimore Ravens, the uh, Seattle Seahawks. That game, that game stuck out. Uh, that was the game that the Jaguars literally physically broke the Seahawks. That was hilarious to see. And, you know, Bortles is on top of the world, man. Like, everybody loves Blake Bortles for what he did. Uh, he put the Jaguars in position to be one play away from making it to the Super Bowl. And... And that was really, like, we we weren't getting any of that, you know, 10 years ago. You know, we had none of that excitement. And I think that that excitement that Blake brought with, along with the defense and um, Leonard Fournette as well, I think it became easier to really get behind Blake Bortles and to really hope for this guy. Because the key thing about Bortles that, you know, I think everybody that's a Jags fan could collectively agree is that he's just such a great guy. Like, I mean, you look at him doing interviews and stuff. He's so funny. He's just like a regular guy. Like, the, the my, one of my favorite quotes from Blake was, you know, if you had $30, uh, what would you spend? And, like, that's all you had, your last $30, what would you spend it on? And he said, tacos and Bud Light. Though I'm not a Bud Light guy, like, that is, you know, the t <laughs> that is a guy, you know. That's like a guy I want to hang out with, you know. A guy who wants to take camping with you, you know. And he drives a big fucking black truck, too. Like, I mean, that's... He might as well just come to Idaho and be, and be my best friend, you know, because he's not going to have a job after this season. So, I mean, he might as well. Um, so, after the hype of 2017, 2018 rolled around, and everybody was talking Super Bowl. Everybody. And then a lot of injuries happened and a ton of regress from Blake Bortles. Now... A lot of it is his fault. He's not a great quarterback by any means. But there was a lot of injuries that didn't go his way. Uh, Leonard Fournette wasn't healthy 100% of the time, which was, you know, something that this team counts on, but we'll never get. Like, this team will never get healthy Leonard Fournette 100% of the time, and you just kind of got to stick with that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, Blake was in a situation where he didn't have 100% Leonard Fournette, and he shit down his leg. And he shit down his leg, basically, the whole entire season. And when I say 2018 was probably the biggest letdown of all time, like, 2017, I mean, 2018 was probably the biggest letdown in Jacksonville Jaguar football history, especially with just the hype that was around it and everything that was supposed to happen in 2018. Um, to just go right now 4-11, and like, I mean, that's just... Uh, that's terrible. Like, I mean, it must have just been because Jaguar Twitter is just awful and God's seen it. It was just like, why would we give these animals a good football team again? Like, why would we do that? But, you know, everybody was bashing on Bortles. Everybody is telling him, like, man, get the goofy ass some bitch out of here. And, you know, I was... I, I wouldn't. I wasn't going that far because I still love Blake Bortles as a guy. I hope Blake Bortles goes somewhere, finds a backup role, or even a starting role, man, and just be successful. Because like that's my guy. I've like Blake Bortles forever will be one of my favorite football players of all time. Just because of not only for the 2017 season, but like I said, just as a guy, man, like just such a likable guy. Like his quotes, so down to earth. Like I feel like I've. 
I know Blake Bortles. Like, that's that's the, the kind of personality he brings is that, like, I just feel like I know him personally. Like, I feel like he lives right down the street and, you know, we can hang out and, like, smoke cigarettes on his porch and bullshit and have a good time, you know. And, like, there's not a lot of quarterbacks like that <laughs> that, you know, are just regular guys that are trying to, you know, make their money playing in the NFL. But Blake Bortles was a rare case of that. <clears throat> I posted something on Twitter and I just said, Blake Bortles, I'm so glad he's starting in week 17. I am, uh, uh, like, that, that, like, it puts me over the moon that Blake Bortles is starting in week 17 because he deserves it. Like, like, everybody that's a Jags fan, put your hate for Bortles aside and, like, just say he deserves it. Like, I mean, he didn't necessarily work out in the 2014, 15, and 16, but 17 he gave us a year to remember. And, you know, like, we extended him and, like, that was the craziest time ever when we extended him because like no one no one thought that we were gonna do that um and we paid him and we didn't pay him that much but now we're like looking at it and it's a lot of money that is getting in the way of us you know uh so we're gonna have to end up letting him go but you know like just take a second to appreciate Blake Bortles like in this week 17 game I hope he just does every single one of his quirks once like I hope he gets sacked I hope he, like, does a really good spin move. He has to have more rushing yards than passing yards. Throw a touchdown. Run a touchdown. Um, what else does he do that's hilarious? He needs to throw, like, throw an interception that only Blake Bortles can throw. You know, like, one of those picks. And then, like, throw two more interceptions above that. One of them has to be a pick six. Um, and then end up winning the game. You know, like, that's that's what you gotta do. Like, I want Blake to just go out there and do all of his quirks. I want to see, like, a trick play. I want to see him catch a touchdown before he goes. Like, I think this organization as a whole really likes Blake Bortles. And I think they're really gonna, like, give him a good send-off. Because, you know, I think Blake knows this is his last year here. I think, obviously, everybody in the front office knows and everybody in the locker room knows that. So just let the kid have fun with it. Like, let's call some play calls where... You know, Blake Bortles has a chance to just go out there and have fun because, you know, it's going to be hard for me to watch knowing that uh, Blake Bortles is no longer going to be our quarterback uh, heading into next season. Like I said, that's going to be um, really, really hard on me. But like I said, I'm never going to like a quarterback or just a guy or a player as much as I'm going to like Blake Bortles. Um, he's been one hell of a guy, like, and he's been fun to watch too. Like, he, you're, like he made bad football worth turning into, be, tuning into because sometimes he was just so bad. Like you know, like it's just like a car crash. You know, you look, like you want to look away, but you can't. You know, it's like one of those things. And you know, Blake Bortles, he's given me a ton of memories. He's you know, he really like I said, he was like the quarterback for the Jags my whole high school career. So I mean, uh, he he was there for a big part of my life. And you know, uh, to see him go away. It hurts, but hopefully the Jags are going to be able to bring in a guy that can take him to the next step, like Blake Bortles did, but unfortunately, uh, the front office has made its mind, and Blake Bortles will not be our quarterback um, in 2019, but Blake Bortles, I wish you the best. I hope you see this somehow. You probably won't, but I hope you do somehow. I wish you the best. You're probably my favorite player of all time, and everybody else watching this video, thank you for watching. And that was Dear Blake Bortles. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Trey Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.